Hi, and welcome back to LearnVisualFoxPro.com. In this lesson, uh, we'll be looking at the project manager. Well, when working with large projects, um, we will create um, several files, um, several DBF files, several form files. Uh, you may have several PRG, which are code files. You may have menu files. And, I mean, you may have bitmaps. You may have text files and other files um, that relate to your project. And uh, if you've worked with tools such as Visual Studio, you'll know that Visual Studio allows us to create um, um, projects and, and basically gives us a project manager where we can have um, different files in our project and an easy way to edit and delete and do whatever we need to with the files that are contained within our projects. Um, Visual Fox Pro has a project manager uh, which allow, essentially allows us to do the same thing. To create a project, again you can use the menus. I of course tend to uh, do most things from the command window. So let's go ahead and set our working uh, folder to um, And to create a project, we use the create command. We type project, and we simply give our project a name. So I'm going to call this call this uh, test proj one. And uh, immediately we get the project uh, manager uh, dialog on screen. And you'll notice that we have several tabs here. We have all tabs, which shows the various uh, categories that the, the project manager supports. We have data, which is the same here as the data tab. We have documents, um, which is the same here as doc. And we support three types of documents. A form is considered a document in the project manager. We have reports, and of course, we have labels. Um, going back to all, we have class libraries, which again correspond to the class tab here. And each tab just allows us to focus on the specific item only instead of seeing everything all together. And code is over here, all our PRG files, any C, C, um, any C libraries that we may have developed, or any other Visual Foxboro application um, that we want to include in um, this uh, this project would be listed here and then we have other files which could be um, menus, text files, images and so forth. So we're going to take um, a look uh, in detail. I mean uh, we'll be working with uh, from this lesson going forward we will be working with the project manager more um, as again, it helps to streamline everything. All our files are centrally located or centrally accessible. They don't necessarily have to be stored in the same place, but they're centrally accessible from the project manager. I um, just want to show you a bit of features that we have here. There's this button here that allows us to fold up, as it were, the project manager if we want to get it out of the way. It is also dockable. Let me verify that. Um, should be able to, yeah, so I double click on that and I can dock it here and then I can click on each of these tabs to see the various items that are in there. I tend to prefer to work with mine down here. And so what we're going to do, we, we had created some tables, we had created some forms, uh, some PRG files prior to this and what I'm going to do is simply import these or those into this test project. Um, notice that when the project manager, and just before I do that, notice that the project manager, when the project manager is open, a new menu um, menu item appears on the menu bar. And so now this relates to the project. When we close it, um, I'll retain that, it disappears. And you'll notice that, likewise, for forms, when we create a new form or a new report, we get a new menu that relates to the, the item that we're dealing with. To reopen our project, we'll use the modify 
project, I simply tend to go to the file menu and just simply select it from here. And we reopen our project. Again, the project menu reappears. And uh, I want to import some data. So working from here, I have a bunch of free tables. I can create new tables from the project manager, which I'll come back and do in a bit. So let's add the ones that we created previously. So here I have uh, two tables. I'm just going to add the old table one, DBF. Click OK. And it's now listed here. And I can see all the fields that are in the table. And I can make changes to the table. I can modify the structure by using the menu options here. I can modify. I can browse the contents of the table. I could also remove um, the table from the project manager. Notice I can remove it or I can physically delete from disk. Right, so let's try the remove. Now the table is not deleted. I've just simply removed it from the project. I can go ahead and add it again. And the project is there. If I select remove and of course select the delete, the table will be physically deleted from my hard drive. Okay, so okay, double clicking. Of course, you notice that uh, because this is uh, a little bolder, uh, the shadow run is a little bolder. This is called my default um, button, and so uh, default button is triggered when I double click on any item in the project manager. So the default for the project manager is the modify command. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Uh, we did create a few forms. So I can go, I can open this. All right, let's go from here. Let's go docs, forms, and I go add. And know that the file type um, changes or varies based on the type of document that I want to open. So if I were to go to reports, I've not created any reports. We've not done a lesson on reports as yet. Let's see what the form type shows. Notice that the file type shows report which is a FRX file extension. And of course, if we were doing labels, it would show the LBX extension. So let's go back and add the form. All right, this is an existing form. So for an existing form, we go add. If it were a new form completely, we could simply go new here and use a wizard or create it manually. So I double click and add that to the form. And again, I can, my default button is the modify. I can double click to modify. I can run the form as well. And notice that the menu option changes appropriately. Let's go back to data. When I was on the free table, there is no option there to run. We can browse. So based on the, the file type, the, the button options will change. You can browse a table. You cannot run a table. Of course, you can run a form. You can browse a form. And so that option changes. And um, later on, we look at build. Build. Um, is used to compile our project into an exe or an application, and we'll talk more about it um, uh, in a little, in a few uh, minutes from now. Okay, so we've added a form, and we did create some code. Um, so let's go and add that to, and we have to do this one at a time, unfortunately. So we add one, add another, and the final one. Now, traditionally, when we create an application, a PRG file would be our main file that would actually start the program, set up the menus and the um, Visual Fox Pro um, work area. Um, by that, I mean the application area, this white area here. We, I tend to change my colors to gray. And um, whatever else we may need to do, whether we want the status bar on or off, we would all put that in code. And of course, we, we can make uh, one of these PRG files, the main program file. So when we build our application and we run the application, application will know to start with either demo, or the proglib, or test func. And to do that, we go to projects and we can say set main. Um, and now that is it's not exclusive to PRG file. It could be, um, as in this case, the first executable file that we add to our project was a form. So you notice that this is bold. My Forms 2 is bold. And so this right now is our default application. So if I were to compile my project and run it, it would start by executing the form. And I'm, I'm going to do that in a 
little bit. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, we can modify, we can see our code. And if I wanted to, I could create a new code file. Save changes, yes, it will ask me for a name. I'll call it new prog one. And automatically it's added to the list of programs. Again, I could show you that I can right mouse click. If we right mouse click, there are menu options. Um, uh, basically shortcuts to the project menu here. We can set the main file. Of course, we can rename the file, defuncts. I'll add one to that. Uh, what else can we do? Um, we can edit the description and that would appear down here. I'm not playing around too much with this. Um, new program created from project manager. Okay, so that will just help you to say, okay, what this program does and you put something um, more appropriate, for example, here. I could say that this is our uh, um, program library. Okay, and um, code page, I won't get into all that for now. Exclude allows us to still have an item in the project, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not compiled in the project when we do the build. So I could go ahead and exclude and we'll see this little um, icon beside the name. So I can still access the, the object here, but when I, would, when I compile, uh, the project manager would not compile this into my final executable. It would remain external to the build. And we'll see some examples of that um, with reports. Usually, um, uh, I tend to leave my reports, reports that I've created, I tend to exclude them from the project so that if needs be, I can modify them and just simply send the, uh, my customers uh, the FRX file without having to recompile the, the entire project. Now, um, that's one use for the exclude. Okay, so let's include this. Okay, so um, again, I we could go new, and here we're presented with the form wizard. So if you want to use a wizard to create your form, or if you want to create your form from scratch, and um, let's put a text box here. We can do a whole sort of stuff with this um, very quickly. Uh, 14. So here, just create the new form. Notice the difference. This one is not bolded, so this one, again, is my default. If I were to compile this into an executable, in fact, I'm going to do that. So let's go and talk about the build. The build button allows me to create an executable that will automatically include... Um, tables are always excluded. They're never compiled as a part of your, your final executable because they can grow. Tables, you add data, it changes. Uh, so con the contents of your executable uh, generally don't change on the fly. So once we compile, we get binary code, and that doesn't change, but data always change. So you notice this, the icon here says that the tables, um, by default, are always excluded from your, from your final um, executable. So 
let's go ahead and build an executable from this. So we go build, of course we can build project, which simply says compile um, everything that we have in the project. And here there's also an option to compile all. If we if we uh when we when we build we may build several times throughout the life of our project and there are times when um what the project will do will only build stuff that were changed since the last build. If we want to override that of course we can always check compile all files and so forth. Um we can build an application and well this is just a simply a Fox Pro executable and it requires um, it is binary, um, or Foxboro binary, whatever it is exactly. Um, however, if you create an APP, it requires the Foxboro runtime to, to execute. Okay, And of course, we can create an executable file. And there are some other types that we can create here, which I will get into in the advanced um, videos that I intend to produce. So let's go ahead and, and compile. But just before we do that, we, there's some options that we can set here, such as a version number. So we've not gotten to a point one yet. So we'll start with one. We can say automatically increment. Every time I build, you can put comments here and type. You can say company name. File description, copyrights, okay. and so forth. Any trademarks, your product name, etc. So, and then when we go OK. Visual Fox Pro will ask us for the name of the file. By default, it will have the same name as your project name. Of course, you can you can uh, you can change that. We'll leave it for now, and we'll click OK, and we get uh, compile error and file app. Okay, so let's try the build again. We're just going to build an app. I will ask Visual Fox Pro to display the errors. Tell us what is wrong. Okay. And so the application build completely. Let's try building the executable again. Okay. And so we got that right. It seems because I didn't build the project before, we got a little problem. So if we go back to the disk, we'll see an executable here. By default, it does have a Fox Pro icon. But if you look in the, the, the help there, the little pop-up there in yellow, you see all the information that I entered um, from the version button. We got company. Uh, the version, the date it was created, and so forth. All that which I had specified here. Um, company name shows up and other relevant information as well. Um, this is uh, uh, an XE. Of course, it does require the Foxboro runtime, and we will look at how to build a, um, a distributable package um, in an advance video. Of course I can double click on this to run it and notice it runs outside of my um, Visual Fox Pro window. It doesn't stop of course because I didn't put some key things in there uh, which I'll look at. Uh, you may just saw the flicker there. So it started and ended immediately. And um, let's modify that. Uh, what we would tend to do is to okay I'm going to actually do a lesson on creating an application from scratch, so I will touch that just to keep the, the length of this video or the size of the video down to a reasonable size. So um, that's about it for the project manager. We saw that we can add various types. We will look at classes when we get into object-oriented programming. Again, we can modify our table here and do everything, make changes, and um, we can add new tables using wizards or creating manually as you saw us did in previous lessons but everything now is at a click of a button and um, apart from doing stuff from the command window I tend to work um, a lot with the project manager